What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Vega Bomber, and welcome to Vega Bomber Land. So, all right, here's the new video for this week. Here is a topic that I wanted to talk about now for a while, and the topic is pretty simple. It's who is the best MCU villain thus far? Now. Most of the time when you talk about great villains from the Marvel Universe perspective, and I'm, when I say Marvel Universe, I'm talking about Disney, most people think of Loki. And, well, Loki been has been in three movies, and I'd say he was definitely a great villain in Thor. Uh, not so much in Avengers, and then, of course, he just had a kind of a side character role in that last Thor movie. Um, but at any rate, when you think about Loki, though, everybody usually pretty much says that Loki's been the best Marvel Universe villain thus far. However, I would actually think that we can make another argument. I think we can make an argument for Zemo. Yes, Zemo, that same Zemo. I get it. Some of you out there think that he didn't deserve to be in the movie or he didn't add nothing to the movie because they were going to fight anyway because of the Sokovia Accords. But I'm going to say you really weren't watching the full movie. So for those of you who know that Zemo is a good character, I got you back on this video. Yeah, so basically Zemo comes out this year and I think that you can make a strong case for Zemo and his villainy, if you will. And so this video then is going to be Loki versus Zemo. And I'm going to break them down basically by looking at five different categories. Uh, the first category is power and abilities. Second category is resources that they have at their disposal. Third category is plan. What was the strategy of their plan? Fourth category would be plan effectiveness. Did it work? Did, how well did it work? And if it worked, how well? And then the last category is going to be the intangibles, which you could throw in motivation and a few things like that in there. So let's get started, shall we? So to get started, let's start with that first category, power slash abilities. And let's start with Loki. So Loki, we know in the comics, Loki is a god. He is Thor's stepbrother, if you will. So he's a god, he's the god of mischief, and he's a very flamboyant character who's definitely kind of uh, emo. I mean, he's a little jealous of the fact that his brother is, is getting all the shine and he's not really getting all the glory at all. So he's that kind of red-headed stepchild, if you will. So that's kind of Loki. But Loki's power is that he's also, again, I mean, just being a god is a big thing. And that's Loki's biggest thing. And then he's, of course, the god of mischief. So he's got magic on his side. He can do a whole bunch of things. What about Zemo? Well, Zemo doesn't have really any special powers, unless, of course, you talk about how smart he is. So with Zemo, it's more about the abilities that he has. So we know that he's ex-military, so he's actually had to pass a certain kind of fitness, and he had to be a certain kind of warrior in order to get to the level that he was, because he was leader of an E-Squad. So it was a top rank deal. It wasn't like he was just a foot soldier. This guy's kind of Black Ops for Sokovia. We know that he's also definitely good at covert measures because nobody saw Zemo coming. We know that he's also good at trickery. He was able to plan certain things to make certain people get implicated in the film, i.e. Bucky. But in terms of special abilities, no, he doesn't have those. And because of that, this first category, that one's pretty easy. Advantage, Loki. All right, let's move on to the next category. The next category is resources. So let's start once again with Loki. Now, Loki had a lot of resources. He had the, the ability to get a hold of that Tesseract. He also had the boom stick that he was given, and he also had the Shatari behind him. So when it comes to that, and dark magic being able to conjure him in places and get around and his mischief, he had plenty of resources to work with. Now, Zemo, on the other hand, not nearly as many resources. He is ex-military, so he did have a bunch of military equipment that he could get a hold of. He was able to make a bomb, right? He's definitely very, very focused. He had a very focused hatred. He kept listening to that cell phone recording of his wife's last message that she left him before she was crushed. And so his anger was just focused. Um, and then, of course, he had these tech skills, which he talks about in the film. He says that he has patience and expertise. So once, once uh, Black Widow put all those files out there through the internet, he was able to hack it no problem and figure out about Mission Report, December 16, 1991. Category 3, let's talk about the plan. And once again, we'll start with Loki. So Loki's plan was to get a hold of the monster. If you remember, Black Widow said, you're a monster. And to that, Loki said, no, 
you brought the monster. So Loki's plan was to get the whole mind control, just like he did in the comics, and then use him to tear up the Avengers. The second part of his plan was then to unleash the Shatari so that they could take over the Earth so that then he could somehow rule over it with his Shatari. Mm, I don't know about that. Zemo! Zemo's plan, like Loki's, it was to get the, the Empire to fall down from the inside. And that's exactly what Zemo says. When Bucky's triggered by Zemo and Captain America catches him, he says, what do you want? And Zemo says, to see an Empire fall. He says, if you tear an Empire down on the outside, it'll just rebuild itself. So you tear an Empire down from the inside, right? And that's what he says to him. Super, super smart. So what is Zemo's plan? His plan then is to, at first, get that mission report because he'd already hacked uh, Black Widow's files and he knew that there was something on that mission report that was damning and he needed to get a hold of it. That's why he was so obsessed with getting that mission report. If you don't remember, you also have to watch uh, Winter Soldier. There was also a piece in Winter Soldier where Arnim Zola talks about measures would happen and that's when they show that video. And so he knew something was up with that and that's why he was so obsessed to get that mission report and so he does and then he also knows how he's gonna f frame Bucky because here's somebody that he knew that Captain America was good friends with he knew this and he pretty much had a pretty good idea that Iron Man couldn't have known about his parents being killed by Bucky because they're uh, both Captain America and Iron Man wouldn't be so chummy so buddy buddy up until this point so yeah Zemo's plan was to tear them apart from the inside and I think his plan was a lot better than Loki's plan. So I would have to say, when it comes to this category, in terms of plan and strategy, advantage, Zemo. Now, before you start getting up in arms and start screaming, let me let you know something. Zemo is a chess player, which means that he's got a few moves that he's gonna do ahead of time, but he's also gonna see what you do so he knows how to counter you. So it wasn't that Zemo's plan had to work flawlessly. He left room to see what would happen. If you remember, when he captured that, that Hydra agent in Cleveland, that guy, that's who he was first going to go to to get that mission report. But that guy would rather die than give it to him. So therefore, he says, I guess I'll have to use other means and bloodier means to get what I need. So Zemo's plan with that tells us that he was willing to change the parameters as the parameters changed. So I think that threw some of you and you thought it was a little too convenient. And at first, when I first saw it, I kind of thought, yeah, it was a little convoluted. But after watching the film four times, like I have now, I can tell you, no, it's actually pretty genius. He had to hide in the covers because even Zemo said himself, even stronger men than me have tried. So he had to be in the shadows and play the Palpatine, which I think he did really well. The next category is plan effectiveness. So it's one thing to have a plan, but it's also another thing to see how effective that plan really was. Okay, so let's start with Loki. So Loki's plan, let's look at the effectiveness of Loki's plan. So his plan, again, was to get the whole mind control, tear up the tear up the Avengers, and then somehow go ahead and release the Shatari, which would only make the Avengers unite and then go fight against for the greater good, against the Shatari for the greater good. So it seemed kind of stupid. You had them torn up. But then you unleash the Shatari, which all that did was make them unite. So that wasn't a good plan, Loki. I can't say that your plan was really that effective. But Zemo, though, his plan was extremely effective. We get that next to last shot in the film where Ross is kind of, you know, chiding him a little bit. Well, now that you've done all this damage, how does it feel to see that your plan didn't work? And then Zemo just says, didn't it? And I mean, that right there lets you know yeah, Zemo had this whole thing work out the whole time. And by the way, I don't think that Captain America and Iron Man made up. I think Captain America tried to extend the olive branch just like Iron Man tried to earlier. But I can't, I don't interpret that Iron Man just said, okay, cool, forget it. Let's just be friends. I don't think he did that. Now that happened in Batman v Superman when they found out that they had their moms, both names were Martha. But I don't see here where Tony just forgot about it just like that. The Avengers were still split at the end of this movie. So I'd have to say that Zemo gets the advantage here in terms of plan effectiveness. All right, so at this point, it's two for two. Loki gets the first two checks. Zemo gets the last two checks. So this fifth category is gonna have to do it. And I'm just gonna have to say this has to do with just the intangibles of everything that we do know thus far. I would think that since Loki has all the power, has more resources, you would think that his plan would have been better and it would have been more effective and it would have worked. 
but it doesn't. It doesn't work at all. In fact, it makes the case for Zemo because Zemo does this without a tesseract, without a boomstick. Okay, he does this without a Shatari army of aliens. He does it without any special powers. Zemo is just an ordinary man, but was smart enough to stay a couple steps ahead of a whole team of Avengers and tear them down. And that, my friend, you have to give that to Zemo. So 3-2, three, 3-2, two, three, two, Zemo has to win this one. Zemo is definitely the best villain in the Marvel Universe so far. Now I know, some of you are going to go, but hold on, Bomber, hold on, no way, uh-uh, 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 no, not buying it, not having it. But see, you, you have to understand something, right? You would think with everything that Loki had, he could come up with a better plan than what he had, right? It was pretty stupid, and it didn't work. That's even worse. So at this point, you take a guy who all he's doing is just focusing his anger and his hatred towards the Avengers because of his family being gone, the motivation. Sure, look at the motivations, right? Zemo's motivation, vengeance. Loki's motivation, he just wants to get back at Thor because of, of the perceived slights, as Thor said, in Avengers. So one is just, I want to get back at you because daddy loves you more than me. And the other one is just, hey dude, you killed my family. I'm ex-military, so I know what I need to do. I just need to take you out. I need to take all the Avengers out, and then I'm going to take myself out. And by the way, that's the only thing that Zemo's plan, the only part of Zemo's plan that didn't work. He wasn't able to take himself out at the end of the game because Black Panther stopped it. So anyway, what did you guys think? This is my idea, Loki versus Zemo. I still think that Zemo is the best Marvel villain to this date for those very reasons that I just specified. Do you have some other arguments? Is there other things that you think I didn't take into consideration? Well, put it in the comment section below and let me know and I'll go ahead and talk about it. We can engage this a little further. But for now, I just want to say, best Marvel villain, hands down, has to be Zemo. It has to be. So anyway, it's your boy Vega Bomber, and I am out. <laughs>